It had taken a thousand years for nature to build an inch of topsoil on the southern plains. During the thirties, this soil was almost ceremonially carried across the nation in the form of angry dust storms. It was as if nature was fighting back. Farmers had stripped the southern plains of its grasses, and poor farming practices had forced this land into a dire situation. Nature had her revenge, of course. She sued us for malpractice, and our sentence was the Dust Bowl. From the summer of 1931 till the long-awaited rains of 1939, the Great Plains of the United States of America was in a state of disrepair because of the infamous Dust Bowl. We just kept farming, hoping for rain. Bernice Vannersteel It seemed quite apparent after the United States of America joined World War I in 1917 that no one had it better than a farmer in the southern plains. The demand for wheat increased because of the war, and farmers began to reap the benefits. Wouldn't it make sense for plains farmers to use every inch of the very rich and very profitable land? To say the least, these farmers fed America as well as numerous nations, but the farming methods used to bring forth the most profitable crop were taking a toll on the land. They saw that that was very rich soil and that uh, with a proper amount of rainfall they raised tremendous crops. Well, they went out there and they just uh, plowed up section after section of pasture land and uh, the way they plowed it there was no cover at all. The beautiful grasslands of North America were no more and in their place stood countless plowed fields. These fields had been plowed deeply with one-way plows and used repeatedly. One-way plows broke up clods and crushed the topsoil, which left a fine surface great for planting. During the great harvests of 1930 and early 1931, the Oklahoma and Texas panhandles were known as the most prosperous regions in the nation. For plains farmers, the decade opened with an extremely optimistic outlook. But beginning with the summer of 1931, those farmers would face the most difficult eight years of their lives. The rain simply stopped and the Dust Bowl began. There, basically, there's two factors that came together that caused the Dust Bowl. One, obviously, is the lack of rain, and the other, the extensive amount of tillage that took place out there, the, there was a lot of ground broke up that did not have cover on it. The ground was un, basically left unprotected. So I would say those are the two major factors, the lack of rain, and the type of conventional tillage that was taking place on an extensive amount of acreage out there. The drought dried up every crop in the Central Plains, and no plant could withstand its wrath. Hopeful farmers scraped the land for any meager yield, hoping, wishing, and praying for rain. Winds picked up the dehydrated soil with frightening speed, then carried it in massive storms. The only thing that could save the Great Plains was rain, but very little fell. If the wind would blow, why then the dust would blow and with this uh, extreme drought well, there was uh, no way to hold it. By the spring of 1934 the massive drought impacted 27 states severely and affected more than 75 percent of the country. Then when Roosevelt took office in 1933 the dust storms had more than doubled in number from the previous year 14 to 38. They were fearful I don't care what anyone said even to a lot of the adults. It, it's pretty fearful when you see just a, a rolling dirt storm coming towards you, and then when it hits, it can be almost as black as night. And I don't care how tough you think you are, it, uh, it kind of scares you. The soil-filled clouds moved millions of tons of topsoil across the nation. This soil was not your typical everyday mud pie dirt. No, it was extremely fine, like a fingerprint dusting substance. It seeped through even the tightest of homes. It seemed to people of that time that, no matter how much they dusted and wiped, soil was everywhere. Just to give you an idea how much ground was moving out there, they had two tractors parked out by the shed. And it blew that one storm coming in and blew. It covered all the tractors except the exhaust pipes that were sticking out through the pile of dirt. Just the exhaust pipe. So they had to dig those things out. On April 14, 1935, a day that most remember as Black Sunday, 
the Great Plains faced the single most destructive black blizzard of the Dust Bowl. Uh, there was one great big dust storm that came on Sunday afternoon. I think everybody remembers that one because it was like a clear blue sky. We were playing outside and and here in the west came this big dust. I mean like a thunderstorm only. It was completely dust and it just just formed. It just went over us and and it was dark and we went we were scared. We went in the house and in fact we even went in the cellar. Hugh Bennett, a soil conservationist, had been trying to reform farming practices for years. In 1933, he helped create the Soil Erosion Service. He later testified before a congressional committee about soil conservation in April of 1935. Bennett, who came to be known as the father of soil conservation, convinced Congress to pass the Soil Conservation Act of 1935. The uh, initial uh, emphasis for the soil conservation movement primarily was the result of the Dust Bowl in the early 30s. And in 1933, through the efforts of Hugh Hammond Bennett, uh, the father of conservation, they established the Soil Erosion Service, which in 1936 turned into the Soil Conservation Service. And these agencies primarily were responsible for providing technical assistance to landowners and operators so that they could improve their farming and ranching methods to help control the soil erosion. After the passage of the Soil Conservation Act, President Roosevelt ordered that the Civilian Conservation Corps plant more than 200 million trees from Canada to Abilene, Texas to break the wind, hold water in the soil, and hold the soil itself in place. One of the most influential acts that created a turning point in agriculture was when the Roosevelt administration began to educate the farmers. The administration educated farmers on soil conservation and anti-erosion techniques, including crop rotation, strip farming, contour plowing, terracing, and other beneficial farming practices. By rotating crops year to year, farmers could keep the soil more moist and fertile, so the soil was less likely to erode. Strip farming helped curb soil erosion by reducing the wind speeds across the surface of the soil. Every other strip of land would be fallow and the next would be planted with crops. By planting crops across the contour of the land, soil was less likely to erode than if it was plowed up or downslope. Terracing created stair steps and fields to hold moisture in the soil and hold runoff. Terracing also helped curb wind erosion by creating small changes in elevation. With a little added incentive from the government, a dollar an acre to practice a new farming method, the amount of blowing soil was reduced by 65%. Thankfully, in the fall of 1939, the long-awaited rains came. The golden sea of the Great Plains returned. As time went on, this, this assistance then did improve the ground cover that we have out there to help protect against wind erosion. And then in the 1950s, when we went, had the, another very severe drought, that it was not as geographically extensive as the 1930s, but it was a very significant drought that hit the greater part of the Great Plains area. This drought uh, did not have the devastating effects of the 1930s, primarily because of the, of the technical assistance that farmers had received and their improvements that they had made in the conservation that they were putting on the land. Over the past 75 years, the United States hasn't experienced nature's wrath on such an epic scale. Even though the Great Plains has recently suffered through an extreme drought, the agricultural changes made because of the Dust Bowl prevented another natural event of such magnitude. We've learned what it'll do. And, uh, you might say the far, we got better farmers, but uh, we just got better tools for them to work with. In conclusion, the Dust Bowl was a major turning point for agriculture. When farmers cultivated the Great Plains, they plowed up their own destruction. The black blizzards brought about the turning point in agriculture, major farming technique reform, which now ensures the safety of future generations. Mm -hmm.